An interesting tweet that came out from Brett McMurphy on Monday morning, and it gained a lot of traction, right? There were a lot of people going back and forth about this. And the tweet is as follows. Only 15 FBS schools do not play an FCS team in 2022. Colorado, Georgia State, Houston, Louisville, Maryland, Michigan, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Old Dominion, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Penn State, Texas, USC, and UTEP. It says every SEC, MAC, and Mountain West team will play an FCS opponent this fall. Now, the reason that this became such a big issue is because a lot of people have wanted to do away with that FCS game. And I do understand it as far as the uh, the competitive balance portion of this, right? Because if you have Alabama playing an FCS team, it's not exactly fair. But if you look at it from the FCS point of view, right, that's a massive, massive game for an FCS team. Those are players that likely would never get to play inside of Bryant-Denny Stadium or inside of... Uh, uh, Tennessee Stadium, etc. Like all of these big time brands, you have an FCS school that gets to go there to play. For example, Tennessee State going to play at Ohio State, or excuse me, at Notre Dame in 2023. That's a massive deal, right? Because those players likely would never get that opportunity to go play at Notre Dame. That's just, it, if you love the sport of football, it's what makes it awesome, right? So, the, I think that we have gotten away from the buy games and the importance of them, right? A lot of people just seem to forget exactly how much of an economic impact that the 2020 season had when we moved into conference-only schedules, right? The SEC dropped all of their FCS games. One game against an SEC opponent for an FCS team can be up to 10 to 15% of their athletic budget, if not more especially for an FCS team who doesn't have a huge television contract, who doesn't have bowl game revenue, et cetera, et cetera, right? If you're not making NCAA tournaments, if you're not doing whatever, it's tough. It's incredibly difficult to find a way to balance the budget when you're not getting those paydays. Say Kent State, for example, a couple of years ago, I think it was 20, you know, it was 2020. They lost, I believe, three buy games. That three games against Power 5 competition that would have amounted to 17.1% of their athletic budget. Now, that is just a G5 school that is going and traveling to P5, con- like, not contenders, but you get the point, P5 teams. Teams that are getting massive media payouts that can afford to pay them to come in. In most cases, it's a million bucks. In some cases, it's 500000 An FCS school can come in and play you for $600,000. And that will handle a large majority of their athletic budget for the year. And people seem to not understand exactly how important FCS, G5, FCS, Division II, etc. is to the ecosystem that is college football. If you don't have all of these different options for kids to be able to get into school, etc., how many kids are still going to play football in high school? How many kids are going to keep playing in peewee and middle school, et cetera, to go into high school with? Like, this ecosystem is incredibly fragile. And if if you think that those teams are not worth anything, I understand where you're coming from. Because as far as viewership, ratings, et cetera, that's one thing. But you got to be able to keep them afloat. And that's one way that you do it is these SEC schools, et cetera, continue to play these FCS teams. And it basically is them giving them a check, get a donation to come in and take a loss. And, and a lot of these big-time teams that are moving into the Big Ten, et cetera, don't understand that some of them are coming in to take losses as well. But regardless, they just got a bigger name brand on their jersey. Regardless. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.